Hi, I'm Tom Kalmer. I'm Kungarikan and Iwaja from the Northern Territory, but I'm also the National Coordinator for Tackling Indigenous Smoking. So this series of videos has got a little bit for everybody, be you a smoker or a non-smoker, in a way to live a long and healthy life. It's a very important resource because what we're trying to do is to be able to provide information that helps any person understand the benefits of not smoking and to recognise that we're not alone, that there is some support out there. And so we've got a lot of people who are either non-smokers or have given up smoking who really put themselves out to be champions, to be role models, to be able to encourage others to think about um, you know, their life journey uh, without cigarettes. So come on, join us to make Australia, to make Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander world a smoke-free world. So what do they put in a cigarette? They use leaves from the tobacco plant that have a very strong chemical in them called nicotine. Nicotine is addictive and makes you want more and more and more. But that's not all. Then they add more than 200 poisons, including insect spray, toilet cleaner, lighter fluid, arsenic and rocket fuel. And even that's not all. In fact, there are more than 4,000 chemicals that go into one cigarette. My name is Janon Batty. My family is Wutapi from up in far north Queensland and I've got ties to Darwin as well. We talk about the three big ones which are tar, nicotine and carbon monoxide. Um, and they affect the body in different ways and over different periods of time. My name is Michael Roberts. I'm from Bundjalung country, which is north of New South Wales. Arsenic, benzene, lighter fluid, rat poison. So there, there is just so many um, dangerous chemicals that's inside. In one, that's only in one cigarette too. So. I guess the most common one that people associate with cigarette smoking is lung cancer. But that's not the only thing. There are plenty of other cancers. For me, it's a real concern when I see young women smoking when they're pregnant. Um, it does affect the unborn child. So we find it very important to help educate our clients about secondhand and thirdhand smoking. Secondhand smoking is when there's someone standing next to you smoking and you're getting that physical effect from the smoke that they're producing. Um, and you can be affected just as much as they are. And then there's third hand smoke, which is really important for us when we're talking to family groups or in a social setting. That third hand smoke can linger on your surfaces where you are. Um, kids can go along and touch those surfaces and then the chemicals are coming in through that skin contact. Young kids who, who can't, they don't have the capacity to get up and move away from mum or dad or whoever's smoking around them. So we encourage our clients to be mindful of where they're smoking. My name's Ken Leclerc I live in Alice Springs, the country of the Mbartawa people. The most interesting sort of reaction we get or I get is when we talk about the third hand smoking. So if you're a, a proud grandparent that actually smokes cigarettes as well, and then you go and handle your brand new grandchild and with the nicotine stains on your finger, what are you doing? You're touching the little cheeks or the little feet and what do they do? They get the first intro into tobacco. How great is that? Thank you, Grandpa. A lot of our people do love their animals. They love their dogs, you know. And if, if we can share that the pets are being affected as well, sometimes that might be the motivation for someone to quit smoking or cut down their smoking or to even move their smoking outside of where the pets are, which is also where other family members might be. That is so important in regards to how other, our actually smokers are consciously aware of actually going away and smoking on their own. Just, you know, go a bit further out and smoke yourself. Have your own smoking ceremony if you like. That's why um, a lot of them tell their parents, you know, don't smoke in the house. 
because we, we know it's really bad for you. So um, the message is getting out there about the second hand and third hand smoking. So hopefully um, with the test teams that we've got in Australia can make a um, real big difference um, in trying to uh, stop them from smoking. So yeah, it's, it's definitely working. The kids are talking about it now, so our message is getting out there. So it is a really important conversation to have with our clients and sometimes it is difficult for them to be able to say, please don't smoke near me. We encourage people just to be honest and respectful to the people that they're talking with that this is something that we're choosing to have is a smoke-free home. Can you please not smoke in my house? And obviously being respectful makes it easier for that other person then to say, okay, thank you for letting me know. I'll go and smoke outside. The smoke is what they're doing to themselves. Is yeah, it's your choice, but then what you're doing to innocent sort of children around you, it's affecting them. So if you love your family, then do the right thing. Don't sort of smoke next to them. Yeah, you know, go and smoke outside yourself.